Well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we apologize for being a little bit late, and then we got a, I shouldn't say accosted by the press, but a, a direct frontal approach as we came down the stairs. But uh, we're really pleased to have Senator Schumer here at the Jackson Center, and I wanted to recognize uh, others here who are hosting this today. Um, first of all, I want to rec recognize Greg Peterson, who's chairman of, or the president of the Jackson Center. Greg is here. Uh, Mike Sullivan from the Jamestown Area Chamber. Uh, Carolyn French, the uh, chairman of the Chautauqua County Chamber, and Pam Leidick, and, and several from the uh, chamber are here. Uh, I think Todd Tranum is probably here, Gary Johnson, other, others. I saw Heidi Nolo come in from the Jamestown Manufacturers Association, and uh, Lee Harkness from the Downtown Development Corporation. So, Senator, we've tried to include the kinds of people you wanted to hear from, basically business and manufacturers. I, I also know there's a lot of elected officials here, including Senator Pat McGee, and, uh, and there's, there's a former elected official, I don't know what they're worth, Stan Lundin. Uh, <laughs> they're worth more than they were when they were elected. <laughs> uh, so, and I, I saw Tony Caprino, and I don't, is the mayor of Jamestown here? I don't know. If, there's yeah, Sam, okay, I'm sorry, I'm Bill Parment, our assemblyman. Uh, I'm looking down through here, I, I know I'm going to get shot in the head. Mark Thomas already, you saw him earlier, of course. And So anyway, the, the purpose of this, uh, is really to have input from you, but I, I think the senator wants to have a few words of introduction. He and I go way back. I was in the assembly with him uh, in Albany, uh, and then he went on to greater and higher things in, in Congress, and then ultimately into the U.S. Senate, and uh, we're very pleased to have him here at the Jackson Center today. So, uh, Chuck you, Schumer, Robert. Senator Schumer, welcome Thank to you, the Jamestown. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you, Raleigh, and it is great to be back. Uh, this is my 11th visit to Chautauqua County since I've become senator. Um, thank you, Nancy. I like your new haircut. Very nice, Nancy. I knew Nancy when she worked in the state senate, and I was in the state assembly. Um, and um, but somebody said this is my 11th visit here. Somebody said I've set a record for senators throughout their terms, let alone in the first term, but I'll be back many, many times. I love coming here, and I thank all of you for the turnout. A couple of things I wanted to mention. First, I want to thank Raleigh just for being the great guy he is. We did, we were friends in the assembly. We sat right near one another. Raleigh would fly his little Piper Cub from Jamestown to Albany. Cessna, sorry. Cessna, sorry. Um, <laughs> we fly a Beechcraft Bonanza, so we just landed at the airport. All these single engine, beautiful little planes where you get to really see the countryside when you fly over them. But we would, uh, he would fly me around uh, on Tuesday nights when the assembly wasn't meeting late. We would fly and go to different restaurants in the area. And uh, Raleigh is just a great guy. And I did want to say this. I mean, the work he's done on this Jackson Center is just amazing. And it's symbolic to me of this area. Somehow or other, there's something special about the people in Chautauqua County. And you see it in the elected officials, whether they be Democrat or Republican, um, whether they, you know, be at the state level, local level, federal level. I have not met an elected official representing this area who really is not an honorable, trying to do the right thing, classy person. And that applies to Stan Lundin, uh, my former colleague in Congress, and Raleigh Kidder, my former colleague in the Assembly, as well as our present elected officials, such as Bill Parmet and Mark Thomas, um, Pat McGee. Everybody has the reputation of being a straight shooter <coughs> and really working hard for the area without all the, Sam, Mayor Teresi, um, without all the bunk you often find associated with politics. And I think it's appropriate that we're here at the Jackson Center because Justice Jackson had that reputation on the court. He was a straight shooter. He called it as he saw him and something that really appeals to me here at the Jackson Center, as you know I've been very involved lately in the discussions as to who should be on the federal bench. And I've had three standards all along. One is excellence, legal excellence. We should not, these are very important positions, U.S. Supreme Court above all, but all the federal courts, lifetime appointment, 
And we should not have someone's brother-in-law, someone just because they labored in the party vineyards, get that kind of appointment. The second is moderation. I don't like judges too far right or too far left. Judges at the extremes, judges who tend to be ideologues, don't do what the Founding Fathers said that judges should do. And the Founding Fathers, what a great bunch of geniuses. I mean, they were called the greatest bunch of practical geniuses ever assembled. And you put all those words together, greatest, group, I think it was group, not bunch, excuse me. I'm in grape country, so I'm talking bunches. Uh, <laughs> practical and genius. And you put it all together, they were. And they didn't want judges to make law. And you know, in the liberal courts of the 60s, judges made law from the left. And now in the very conservative courts of, the, uh, of this area, they are making law from the right. They're both wrong. And so I look for judges who are moderate. And Justice Jackson was that type of judge. He was legally excellent, had one of the great legal minds, didn't even go to college, read the law, but just was so good he advanced through the ranks and did so many things. And at the same time, he was a moderate. He didn't like the ideologues. And, you know, if God had given him a few more years, he would have even influenced our country even more when he went back to the Supreme Court after doing what he did at Nuremberg. So it's appropriate to be here uh, because I think Justice Jackson symbolizes what this county is all about. And what this county is all about is really the best of America. Hardworking people, people of moderate ways, as they sometimes say in the Pennsylvania Dutch country, um, people who are the, are the root of what this country is all about. And so uh, I'm glad to be here, Raleigh, and I think it's so appropriate that you have honored Justice Jackson and his memory by putting together this beautiful, beautiful building, which I hope to hope, help, hope we can help out from Washington as well. Um, because he did a great, great job with it.